Hey there, and thanks for watching. This video lesson is going to be on pedostatic system errors. Prior to taking off for a flight, pilots should check their pedostatic instruments, as well as all the other instruments, for any errors. The ground is a good place to do this because you know what your instruments should be reading. You know that your altimeter should be reading the airport elevation. Here in this video, we have a thousand feet elevation that should be reading on the altimeter. The VSI should be reading zero feet per minute because you're not climbing or descending. And the airspeed indicator should be reading zero knots. Of course, if you're in place, not taxiing, not flying, anything like that, you're just sitting on the taxiway. Let's go over some possible errors we might see from each of these pedostatic instruments and how we should deal with them as pilots. The first error I want to talk about is caused by clog static ports. In this situation, the altimeter will not be changing during climbs or descents. So if your altimeter continues to display the same value, even during an obvious climb or descent, then this should ring the alarm bells that something is up. And this is what we see here in the animation. We're in an obvious climb on takeoff, but both our altimeter and our VSI show constant values. When the altimeter is stuck like this, it is likely that the static ports or vents have become clogged or iced up. If you see this happen, check your VSI as well to confirm. If this is also not changing its indication when you climb or descend, then you likely have clogged static ports. When no air is able to get into the static port, the altimeter will never sense any change in static pressure and will therefore continue to indicate the same altitude. If the static port is clogged, you won't be able to get your VSI, altimeter, or airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator may look like it's functioning normally because it still may change with changes in pedal pressure, but the indications will be erroneous. Use your alternative static port inside the cabin if this occurs. The next error I want to talk about is altimeter errors caused by temperature. Altimeters work by finding the difference between standard pressure and the measured static pressure and turning it into an altitude. When the pressure is not standard, we use the altimeter setting window to correct for it. Here on the screen we see if we get a new pressure setting because the pressure outside has changed, we simply enter that setting into the indicator and the indicated altitude changes accordingly. When the temperature is not standard, we have no way for correcting it for it on the fly and therefore we have an error in our indicated altitude. On a standard day in terms of temperature, the altimeter has no errors for temperature. On cold days, the column of air measured by the altimeter is contracted. This results in the altimeter measuring less pressure above it. Column of air shrinks, less column above aircraft equals less pressure. The altimeter sensing less pressure means that the indicated altitude will be higher than it should be. This is where the mnemonic from high to low look out below comes from. Because when you fly from high temperature area to low temperature area, the altimeter will read lower pressure and thus a higher altitude, indicated altitude, and you will be flying lower than you think you actually are and you'll need to look out below. On warm days, the column of air measured by the altimeter is expanded. This results in the altimeter measuring more pressure above it. The column of air expands, more column above the aircraft equals more pressure. The altimeter sensing more pressure means the indicated altitude will be lower than it should be. This is where the mnemonic from low to high clear the sky comes from. But when you fly from a low temperature area to a high temperature area, the altimeter will read higher pressure and thus lower altitude and you will be flying higher than you think you are, aka clear the sky. Next, I want to talk about VSI errors. First is when your VSI reads a non-zero value while you are on the ground and clearly not climbing or descending. If your VSI is not displaying zero feet per minute on the ground but is slightly off, then you simply can note this error and apply it as your VSI zero point while using it in IFR flight. For example, if your VSI is displaying minus 150 feet per minute, which is common for the this error to happen where the VSI needle kind of hangs a little bit. So if it's showing minus 150 feet per minute on the ground, then you know that every indication is going to be 150 feet per minute lower when you are flying. So if you want to fly a climb at 500 feet per minute, like we see here, you should target 500 minus 150 or 350 feet per minute on your VSI. So a 350 foot per minute indication on your VSI equals a 500 foot per minute climb. 
If you want to descend at minus 500 feet per minute, then you should target minus 500, minus 150, or minus 650 feet per minute, or 650 feet per minute descent on your VSI. Next is when your VSI is not changing during climbs and descents. We already alluded to this with the altimeter, but let's revisit and show what that would look like. If your VSI continues to display the same value even during an obvious climb or descent, then this should ring the alarm bells that something is up. Specifically, when the VSI is stuck, it is likely that the static ports or vents have become clogged or iced up. Check your altimeter as well. If this is also not changing its indication when you have climb or descend, then you have clogged static ports. Again, if your static port is clogged, you won't be able to use your VSI, altimeter, or airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator might look like it's functioning, but it's actually going to have an erroneous value based off the pedal pressure that it's receiving. And you should use your stat alternative static ports inside the cabin. Next, let's talk about airspeed indicator errors. And first, let's talk about the airspeed indicator error caused by a clogged pedo or ram port. In this situation, the airspeed display decreases slowly and continuously to zero knots or even beyond. So if you're flying along and it's not, a, you know, you know you're not slowing down to zero knots, obviously this should ring the alarm bells that something is up when your airspeed drops down to zero. When you first see the airspeed decrease, first check your attitude and other instruments to make sure you aren't actually losing airspeed. It is important to trust your instruments, but use them to cross check each other so that you know if one is actually faulty. This is specifically, especially true in IFR flight if you can't see out the window. If you are confident that you should not be losing airspeed, or if the airspeed goes to low enough value that doesn't even make sense, like zero knots or beyond, then your ram or pedo port is clogged or iced up, but your drain hole on your pedo probe is not clogged or iced up. So the pedo ram port is, but the drain hole is not clogged up. So just the front of that pedo probe is clogged up. When the pedo port is clogged, the dynamic pressure in the system will slowly start to go to zero when the pedo pressure escaped the drain hole. So you can the pressure can escape the drain hole and that allows it, when it doesn't get any more new pressure in, that allows the airspeed indication to go to zero. Remember, airspeed indicators work by converting the dynamic pressure or difference between pedo and static pressure to an airspeed. Next, let's talk about when both your pedo port and the drain hole on the pedo probe is clogged or iced up. In this situation, the airspeed display will remain constant regardless of your acceleration, as long as we're in level flight, and we'll get to that. If you see your airspeed indicator stuck at a constant value, no matter how fast you speed up or how fast you slow down, or how slow you slow down, then this should ring the alarm bells that something is up. When the airspeed indicator remains constant, you are almost certain to have a clogged pedo or ram port and a clogged drain hole. With both the pedo port and drain hole clogged, the dynamic pressure inside the system is stuck in there and cannot escape. So there's no change to your airspeed because the dynamic pressure is not changing and your airspeed indicator works by converting dynamic pressure to airspeed. However, if you start to climb or descend, with the pedo port and drain hole clogged or iced up, then your airspeed indication will change. In this situation, your airspeed indicator is essentially working like your altimeter and changing with the change in the static pressure that it is sensing. There's, remember, the airspeed indicator works by converting dynamic pressure to airspeed, but it calculates dynamic pressure by the difference between pedo pressure and static pressure. So if the pedo port and drain hole is clogged, keeping the pedo pressure constant, but the static pressure port is not clogged, then the static pressure will change with a climb or descent. And the difference between static and pedo pressure will change and therefore the airspeed will change. But how can you tell if this is happening or if your airspeed indicator is just working normally? Well, think it works like an altimeter if the pedo and drain hole are clogged. If your pedo port and drain are clogged, but not your static port, then when you climb, your airspeed will increase, and when you descend, your airspeed will decrease. If this happens to you, turn on your pedo heat. The last thing I want to talk about is the relationship of true airspeed and temperature. Remember, true airspeed is calibrated airspeed corrected for altitude and non-standard temperature. In other words, it is the speed of the aircraft relative to the air mass and the density of that air mass in which it is flying. 
a lot of technically advanced aircraft that you will fly in as you progress your flying career will have digital flight displays of indicated airspeed, true airspeed, and even ground speed. These systems are able to take the indicated airspeed that is calculated from the dynamic pressure, correct it for instrument errors to get a calibrated airspeed, and then use temperature and altitude measurements to turn it into a true airspeed in real time. Then it uses GPS distance measurements to calculate the ground speed. As a pilot, your indicated airspeed and ground speed are the most useful to you when flying. But it is also important to understand how true airspeed is affected by temperature because it affects your performance and ground speed. When temperature is colder than standard, your true airspeed decreases as we see here in a change from 125 indicated to 120 true airspeed at the bottom of this digital flight display. On the flip side, when the temperature is warmer than standard, your true airspeed increases. Again, as we see here from a change of 125 indicated to 130 true airspeed. To remember this, you can remember that it goes with temperature, aka a decrease in temperature equals a decrease in true airspeed, and this is because the density of the air has increased around you. And an increase in temperature equals an increase in true airspeed because the density of the air around you has decreased.